Welcome back to AI PRM Tutorials. Today I'm going to walk you through how to use variables in your AI PRM prompts. Variables are one of the most powerful features in AI PRM. It allows you to take your pre-built prompt template and insert placeholders that can help you customize your prompts for even more usability. Think back to Mad Libs. If you're not familiar with Mad Libs as a kid, basically the idea was a little fun story, but throughout the story, instead of a noun or an adjective, you'd have this placeholder. You wouldn't know what the story was about, and you'd have a lot of fun just putting in whatever you thought was a funny plural noun and then read back the story. But in essence, variables and prompts are the same thing. Let me give you an example. Imagine that you're creating a prompt for writing an email marketing campaign. Now you want to be able to use that email marketing campaign prompt over and over, but sometimes you want a few emails, sometimes you want a lot of emails, sometimes your target audience shifts, sometimes you want a short email or a longer one. Each of those little nuanced differences can be used as a variable. What we're looking at here is an example of a prompt I've created in which you can choose the number of emails, the business name, the industry, the target audience, in this case, the email copy framework. So the problem, agitate, solution, or the attention, interest, desire, and action framework or storytelling. And then the, the length of the email with these drop downs. And then you would have obviously the topic of what the campaign would be about. Now, all of a sudden, I can use this prompt over and over and over again. And just to take a look at what it entails so to create a prompt with variables, it's really just a matter of understanding the formatting, see where the variables appear in this prompt, in order for AIPRM to understand where to place in the information that you or a colleague or a friend will input. So let's go through this together. First off, Whenever you're building a prompt in AIPRM, you always need to use this bracket prompt bracket that's going to be in the bottom of that input. If you've never created a prompt in AIPRM, this is the time to go over to our other tutorial, how to create a prompt. But you can see here, you include the prompt in the prompt template, the bracket, capital P-R-O-M-P-T, and then closing bracket. And then in the prompt hint, that's where you'll see this little displayed default value give you a hint about what is expected for this variable. But let's say you want to add more variables. Prompt acts in the variable. Let's add a second one. So now you can start to put this into your prompt. And there are two places that you need to use your variable. The first is bracket variable one, closing bracket. So that's like your Mad Libs. That's where you're going to put it into the body of your prompt. So it flows smoothly no matter what word is put in there for the placeholder. It makes sense to chat GPT. And then at the bottom of the prompt is where you'll be able to create that label, that title for the field where your variable will exist when someone else or you use it again. So you see the format for that is bracket capital variable one, colon, and then whatever title you want to use, close bracket. That's all there is to it. Now you can use up to six variables per prompt. So if you want to add a second one, you would start doing same format, but bracket variable two, bracket, and then bracket variable two, colon, title, bracket. Make sense? You with me? Okay because we can actually do some really cool things. We can put in an optional default value and an optional multiple available options to create that really cool dropdown. So if you want to create your own default value, we're just going to add another colon and the default value. So you still have your bracket variable one colon the title that you want to put in. So in this example, it's number of subject line options. Say I want an email that gives me the ability to choose how many subject line options that ChatGPT is going to provide. And I want the default value to be one. Now I can go in and change the number of subject line options, but as a prompt, as a hint, I'm putting the default value as one. 
But what if I wanted to provide specific options for you to use? What I can then do in the format is create, here's where it gets a little bit longer, but once you start mapping this out, it all makes sense and you can do really cool things with it. So you've got variable one, title, your default value, then your first available value, which would be can be anything you want, and that's actually what will show up in the default value. Then each additional value with a pipe. So that's that's that key right above your return button on your on your keyboard. So it's like if you hold shift and you press the backslash and then you get the pipe, that's how you get that pipe. And then you do that in between each of your values. So you can see here in the example, I've got variable one, I've got the number of subject line options. Then I've got my default value, which is the one that's going to appear one. And then the first available, which is the same, that's also gonna be one after a colon. Then a pipe, two subject lines, pipe, three subject lines, pipe, four subject lines, pipe, five subject lines. And then you can see in the example to the right is this drop down. You can see what the full prompt looks like. And I've actually got it written out here. So you can see in this example, this is for how to write an email marketing campaign. So in this example, I've write a variable one email marketing campaign. So you see variable one. If you see down here at the bottom where I have all of my labels, the title for variable one is number of emails. So write a, say I want a three email campaign, write a three email marketing campaign for my business. Variable two, see down here, is the business name. So, you know, say I run a salon business and it's called Dolly Parton because I'm clever like that. Variable two, write a three email marketing campaign for my business, Dolly Parton, in the variable three industry. And so you can see variable three down here, the title I'll expect you to put in industry. So be hairstyling or salon industry. Notice how I added the word industry after the placeholder so it actually makes sense whenever you're building these out definitely try out different placeholders so ChatGPT would understand because if i just wrote you know if i didn't have industry there it would say for my business dolly parton in the hair salon about prompt that makes no sense now in this case we know prompt is that prompt hint the email topic so you know we would do about dolly parton in the hairstyling industry about our new offer for buy one haircut, get one free. I don't know if she offers that in Nashville, but you can imagine. And then in target language, one of the rules in AIPRM, if you want to do a public prompt, is you do need to use this variable called target language so it can be translated into any language from the available menu. So we keep going down, context, using only the variable marketing, variable for marketing framework. And as you can see, here's why I built out variable for email copy framework is the title. I've got the PAS option, the AIDA option, and the storytelling option. So that's how I get that drop down, and so on and so forth. So you can see how this gets really, really powerful. A couple of other examples that I want to show you. And oh, also when you're building out your prompts, you can use a reference right here in the blank prompt template. It shows you exactly what you need, or you can go to our variables tutorial where I have this all written down with screenshots that you can refer to. Now, another example, social media calendar, but I wanna make sure that I use the variable of the social media platform because in this example, you probably wouldn't have the same type of post for Facebook that you would have for LinkedIn. And then you have the industry variable, and then Let's say I wanted to create a variable that says, okay, ChatGPT, I want you to include emojis in your social media posts because that's our brand. But maybe <laughs> there's another post on LinkedIn where you probably don't want to include emojis. So then you can do a drop down and click do not include emojis. Same if we have different featured products or services, that's a variable and then the business name. So there we go, four variables there, one drop down. Here's a really complex one that can put together some really awesome output. It's the complete small business marketing plan. So we've got our industry, we've got our business location variable, we've got our products and services variable, we got what makes your product or service unique, our goals, our annual marketing budget, etc. And you can see from this prompt how complicated this can get. 
and I just have all those in there and at the bottom. And so then you ultimately get a really cool, comprehensive small business marketing plan. As always, if you have any questions about any of this, please head over to the AIPRM community forums. We'd love to have you join us. If you haven't even tried AIPRM, go ahead, install that now for free Chrome extension, give it a whirl, try out some of these prompts. And then once you go to our paid plans, starting at the pro level, you can get access to these prompt variables. I hope this was helpful. Thanks again for watching. See you later.